no matter where you are in the world, if you're Australian and things go wrong, there's always one place you can turn. The Embassy. Tonight on the show. Five beer, five beer, five beer every day in the minibar. He ransacked the minibar and won't pay up. Ah. But Rodney has a bigger problem. So his visa's expired, so he's here illegally. <laughs> He did get such a big blow, in the front of his head and in the back of the head. They went looking for ping pong bars. Now it's situation critical for Daniel. Every mother's nightmare, worst day, I never remember. They like dumber and dumber. <laughs> and an Aussie bromance backfires. He had like a cut on his face somewhere. Lost all my money, my passport. What happens when you wrestle with ladyboys? Bangkok, Thailand. The name means City of Angels. At the embassy, Ben, an ex-army officer from Tasmania, is hoping for some divine intervention himself. He believes his wife has been kidnapped. The ex-digger works as a night shift manager in a hotel in Bangkok. Trudy takes the case. Three days ago, I went to work Came home in the morning and my wife was gone. She didn't take anything. Her wallet, phone, her iPad, nothing. Our dog. She loves this dog. Little Shih Tzu thing. It's been locked in that room for three days. OK. It's not often that I would see an Australian man in this kind of a situation, this visibly upset. I need to help him and support him through to manage this problem the right way. Ben met his Thai wife, or on a sightseeing trip to the Thai Burma Railway five years ago. They fell in love and got married, but they recently separated for a short period of time. We had an issue and I moved out. A week ago, we decided to get back together. And while we had split up, she met some Thai guy about two weeks ago, on New Year's Eve. And it's this Thai guy that Ben's wife was last seen with. Or's landlord spotted them leaving together the morning of her disappearance. Where do you think she is? What do you think's happened to her? The guy uh, who's with her has yeah. done something to her. Okay. Did you go to the police at all? Yes, or? I did. Okay. I went to Klong Tan police station last night. Yeah, and what happened then? They said to me, well, it's been three days, she's probably dead. One night in Phuket, and the world's your oyster. Welcome to Thailand, eh? If only that was true. <laughs> Harley and Keegan have arrived at the embassy with sore heads and a missing passport and wallet. He had $1,800 in his wallet. All his bank cards, everything. Mm. The boys are on their first overseas holiday together. Harley should have been travelling with his girlfriend. Because I was meant to take my girlfriend away overseas. It was like, I called her up, I was at work, and I was like, I'll take like, me and you go away and then Within an hour, he's called me and I'm going, oh, yep, yeah, me and you go away. So she wasn't happy, yeah. Mm, she wasn't too happy. This is Harley's girlfriend, Kayla. Why he chose bromance over romance is anyone's guess. In hindsight, not his best move. We're like, what, what's um, dumber and dumber? <laughs> Wide-eyed and cashed up, Thailand's Phuket was everything a couple of young blokes could ever dream of. But on the very first night, the holiday came off the rails. Woke up to a knock on the door. He had like a cut on his face somewhere. And he's like, lost all my money, my passport. Keegan filed a report at the local police station, still clutching the one thing he hadn't lost. Take a seat. Help is at hand as consular official Callum comes to the rescue. Yeah, so what happened? Uh, went down Bangalore Road, had a few drinks. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, can't remember most of it. Can't remember what happened. Yeah. A lot of the miners that come here, they're on R&R. &R. They've got a lot of money and they're looking to enjoy themselves, you know, before they head back and, and work hard. So, yeah, a lot of the time it, it ends in a, in a consular case. <laughs> 
Keegan's a bit flaky on the details, so Harley has to fill in the gaps. You know, he reckons like fell out of his pocket, and then like some lady boy or whatever has like picked it up. Like, yeah. There's like three of them. Like you pay X amount of money or something. Wrestling with a group of lady boys is never going to end well. Um, when are you due to fly out? Tuesday night. Tuesday night. The emergency passport. It takes two business days, but yeah, he, he's due to fly out tomorrow evening from Phuket, and he has to get his his emergency passport, and he has to get back to Phuket and fly out. It's cutting it pretty fine. If he misses like one day of work, there's like another eight hundred gone. So it's almost four grand gone. One big night out, four thousand bucks down. The world is not Keegan's oyster. It's just ridiculous. Meanwhile, ex-digger Ben is struggling to hold back the tears. He suspects his wife has been kidnapped by her ex-lover. I left, and she's met this guy. And if he's done something to her, it's because I wasn't there. He claims the police aren't taking his case seriously enough. That's why he's here My fault. for support. Let me just go get someone, OK? It's a tricky situation if the person who's missing is an Australian. But if they've got a partner who's Australian, a spouse, we're trying to look after that person too. Ben, I, I suggest you go back to the, the same police station because now she's been missing for more than 24 hours. Yeah, three days. So the police need to... need to take action. Yeah, well, last night yeah. when I went there, it was, yeah. well, it was this morning at 4 o'clock. You might need to go there during like a normal no, working, working, working hours, hours where the superintendent is there, and if that policeman didn't, doesn't want to take it seriously, so you take Ask it up the to the superintendent. Go and try and relax. I know it's hard, but see if you can get a bit of sleep or whatever, especially if you're going to be up all night tonight, up all night last night. I tell you now, and I promise you this, you won't like it, but if I don't find her, or if we do find her dead, You'll be looking after me in a Thai prison. I will spend the rest of my life. I'll hunt him down and kill him. Coming up. I can't even explain how difficult it is as a parent to think that your son is so badly injured. He was bashed outside of a dodgy strip club. Nicole's desperate race to save her son. Five beer, five beer, five beer every day in the minibar. And the Aussie beer lover who won't pay up. Something tells me this is going to be a to be continued. Ah. The embassy, Bangkok. Yeah, we got here. I seen that. Like, and I like could have cried. I was like. The Aussie coat of arms. Better than a cold beer for a strung out Sparky. It's typical Sparkies, mate. Losing their passports. Keegan's in strife after losing his passport after a big night out wrestling with ladyboys. Yeah, they're a couple of spirited characters, aren't they? <laughs> I don't think they realise how serious losing their passport is, you know? It's not like it's your, your phone or something. It's, it's more important than that. In the best tradition of Aussie mateship, Harley is helping out with the paperwork. What's your mother's name, family name at her birth? But Keegan is stuck on his mother's name. You know how to spell it? No. No. The boys, AKA Dumb and Dumber, are struggling. I, I, I don't want to get it wrong, eh? Like, you usually get my mum to do it. <laughs> I have to get him out of this country. Keegan is supposed to fly back to Australia tomorrow, but he's pushing his luck and about to get some more bad news. Obviously, you're born after there. Consular assistant Lek has discovered that Keegan is a repeat offender. Hi, Mr. Keegan. Yep. Um, we found that this time is your second lost passport. So we need to get approval, so I'm not sure whether by Tuesday you will get the emergency passport or not. This is Keegan's second passport that he lost in five years. We have to go back to Canberra and ask for permission to issue it. There isn't someone here that could approve it? No, no, it must be the delegation will be people in Canberra. In the burbs of Bangkok, it's been another sleepless night for Ben. Every time I come up here, I hope to see her sitting there waiting for me. She never ends. 
he's convinced that his wife, Orr, has been kidnapped. Why else would she leave behind all of her belongings, her bank and ID cards, and her beloved pet, Mickey? Are we gonna get mummy home, Mickey? It just doesn't make sense. Ben was terrified she'd been killed. But late last night, he received a panicked call from Orr. His beloved wife is alive. So happy to hear her voice. And so sad. She was so sad. I kept trying to ask her where she was. She wouldn't tell me. She wasn't alone. Ben could hear a Thai man in the background. He suspects it was Orr's ex-lover and is scared she's still in danger. I could hear him talking to her. He said something to her and she just kept going, please hang up, please hang up. She was crying and then it cut off. I don't know what's going on. She wasn't making any sense at all. Ben calls Trudy at the embassy to update her on the case. Hello, Trudy speaking. Oh, called us last night. From what we can gather, she's being held against her will. Ben's really upset and he can't take control of this situation himself. So I need to help him focus. Ben, when you go to the police this afternoon, they need to know that she's being held against her will. And that she told you that, okay? If Ben goes to the police with Orr's family, it means they'll take it a lot more seriously. Orr's family fears she may have been trafficked. Her uncle's of the impression that she's being taken to be sold to someone. It's 10 p.m. in Bangkok, and Jamie and Michael, two brothers from Sydney's affluent eastern suburbs, are in a state of shock. Their big brother Daniel is in intensive care after being brutally bashed outside a dodgy strip club. He did get such a big blow, like in the front of his head and in the back of the head. After when we arrived at the hospital, we realised the severity of his injury because we've never seen him like that. He could barely walk. And the thing is, you just don't know. You don't know what the injuries are. You don't know if his neck is broken. You don't know if his, if his head's cracked. You don't know what's going on. The three boys were on an overnight stopover in Bangkok at the end of a holiday together. As morning breaks, consular official Donna is getting the first details of the assault. There's no different to a king hit down at King's Cross on a Saturday night. One punch can kill. Donna's priority is to get through to Daniel's mum in Sydney. In the embassy's waiting room, it's a very different story for early bird Keegan. Hi, Keegan. Yeah. Can I see you here, please? Yep. His emergency passport has arrived just in the nick of time. Where's your friend? Is ah, uh, he's left. Oh, he's, yeah. has he? Yeah. Right. He's going home to Western Australia today. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And it gets better. The lady boy who flogged his passport returned it. This one. Isn't he cute? It's cancelled and can now be safely destroyed. This is Keegan's. And he lost it. Lost it as in lost had it, it taken okay. by a, a few lady boys, apparently. I want to take that back. I don't think he's cute anymore. <laughs> Aussie boys will be boys. Nicole, it's Donna calling from the Australian Embassy in Bangkok. How are you? Donna has got hold of Daniel's distraught mother in Sydney. It's been awful. It's been a nightmare. I have to say, I've never had a day like yesterday. Because oh. I could feel her pain and her concern for him. Although the full extent of Daniel's injuries aren't yet known, Nicole's been told he's suffering from a brain hemorrhage and can't stop throwing up. And do you know that whether he's going to need surgery for the for the no, hemorrhage? No, look, he's in a lot of discomfort, which concerns me. Mm -hmm. um, if it were me, I would be panicking big time if I was back in Sydney and my son were in Thailand. In Sydney's eastern suburbs, Daniel's shocked parents are preparing for the worst. But what else do I need? He can take as much as he want because he don't know how long he's going to be there. Yeah, thank you. That's great. It's absolute nightmare. You just, it's, I, I can't even explain how difficult it is as a parent to think that your son is so badly injured. Mum Nicole will fly to Thailand. Dad Rami will sort things out from home. As to how this disaster actually unfolded, 
The three eager beavers headed out for the bright lights of Pat Pong and its notorious ping pong bars. Ping pong bars are unique to Thailand. Lots of people go there, more people go there than you would think. Not only men, women go there too. So you find them on the checklist for lots of tourists. Most people just want to see it for themselves. But the brothers never got to see the show they were looking for. Instead, their tuk-tuk driver drove them away from the bright lights and crowds and brought them here, to this seedy backstreet bar. When the brothers balked at the entry price, a brawl erupted and Daniel was savagely bashed with a chunk of wood. Coming up. Truly, the police wanted to know whether he has been involved in any drug. Oh. Wall's dirty laundry exposed. He wants to know if she's been doing drugs. In Bangkok, Orr's auntie, Orr's cousin and Ben's friend Kevin are all at the local police station to file an official missing persons report. But off the top of your head, what is your suspicion? Is it kidnapping? Uh, I guess part of the role in the embassy is to make sure that people don't get lost in the system. While you need to report things to the police and go through the normal channels, we can phone and say, hey, embassy's interested in this case. With Orr's family present and the report now filed, the police are making the case a priority. No one saw her, no one talked to her until yesterday. The only lead Ben has to his wife's whereabouts is the phone she called from last night. Which number? Two, five, one. The officer in charge agrees to trace the call. They suspect it belongs to her ex-lover. He just ordered the team to check in the service provider. And they're contacting all service providers right now. The main thing that they need to know is she has left with no clothes, no bag. She's got nothing. She, she just went with one set of clothes. With, with no shoes. She had no shoes on. Not wearing shoes in public is a big no-no in Thai culture. The fact that she left with no shoes on made me think she wasn't planning to leave. It's such unusual behaviour, the police suspect something else. They call B at the embassy to find out more. Truly, the police wanted to know whether he has been involved in any drugs. Oh. And I don't think they worry about him. They oh, worry about okay. her. Honestly, he wants to know if she's been doing drugs. Before, yes. When we first met, in, she was doing drugs. So all was a drug user. While you were with her, have you seen her doing drugs? No. The thing they really fear is that because of the argument, she went off to do drugs. The mystery deepens. At Bangkok Airport, Mum Nicole's flight has just landed. She's rushing to see her son Daniel, who's still in intensive care after being bashed outside a dodgy strip club. The brain's such a delicate organ that any damage can have untold consequences. Scans have revealed a fractured skull, a possible brain hemorrhage, and an injured neck. Welcome to Bangkok. I've got so much to tell you. I can't believe I'm here. A very jet lagged Nicole is overcome with emotion. I'm so glad I'm here. Daniel's brothers film it all on their iPhones. So nice to see you, really. A registered nurse. Nicole throws herself into caring for her eldest son and tries to lighten the mood. In Australia, Daniel's dad, Rami, is worried sick. Extremely stressed that they were there and I'm here by myself. Everything that I thought was important, it's not anymore. Daniel's well-being is the only thing that's in my mind at the moment. And on top of these life-threatening injuries, the insurance company is refusing to pay Daniel's hospital bills, claiming he was drunk and that he was the one responsible for the fight. I just sort of feel a bit lost on what is the right decision. Nicole phones Donna at the embassy to unload. The travel insurance company is debating whether he had been drinking. And unfortunately, if they can prove that he was drinking, his policy will be voided. 
That's what I want to know. Where is the evidence? There is no evidence. Nicole tells Donna that the insurance company has asked to see the official police report and Daniel's medical records. The whole process has been ridiculous. In downtown Bangkok, never. Detectives have turned the investigative spotlight onto Ben. I do, I've never, ever in my life done drugs. I will not stand it. There's no way in hell she would ever do drugs in my house. Two the police are also wondering if there's something Ben's not telling them, something he was too embarrassed to talk about until now. The last five months, she's been bar. Bar means crazy. In the hotel at 10 o'clock, on the floor, in a ball, screaming. Screaming, help me, help me, there's a ghost after me. And I tried to get her to go to the doctor because I thought she had schizophrenia or something. There was something wrong for that. Whether Orr's disappearance has anything to do with drugs or mental health is pure speculation. Regardless, Ben's convinced she's been taken against her will. I, I need to find her. I can't leave her like this. And her mum is freaking out. Who knows what goes on in any marriage? Could it be as simple as this? She's just run off to be with her Thai lover. Oh, 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 oh. Trouble is part of the DNA of tourism in Asia. At the consulate in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnamese hotel worker Dung has come in to complain about an Australian who's ransacked the minibar and is refusing to pay his bill. Five beer, five beer, five beer, every day in the minibar. 51-year-old Rodney from Aruba Beach in Sydney is a seaman and big wave surfer who loves a beer or nine. And that's made him an easy target. I got robbed, I got drunk, and I got pickpocketed. Apparently me, I know better than that. Dung's holding his passport as security. She's hoping the embassy can somehow force Rodney to pay his $1,500 hotel bill. If it's a big international hotel chain, sure, they lose a couple hundred bucks. It's not a big deal. But for these smaller ones, and when it's local staff, um, and their managers making them pay the bills themselves, then it's a bigger deal. We give him a call and just let him know that you've come and complained and you have your passport and that he should pay the bills, um, but we can't force him to. If he says, yes, please contact my family, we can do that. But if he says no, we can't do anything. It's hotel policy that if Rodney doesn't pay, Dong and her colleagues will have to cough up the cash instead. They just yeah. worry about this guy. If he disappears, this guy have to take responsibility. Yeah. So they really want to do something. Yeah, so we'll call him. For her, that's the equivalent of a month's wage. No surprise, she wants the passport back. The passport's property of the Australian government. It's not his. It's her only collateral. And we can give it back to him, but we can't give it back to you. I, I give his passport and now I'm, I'm come back and now I have passport. Cannot. Coming up. The wife, the lover, and the ex-digger. She wants to come to my house, but can't because she doesn't know where she is. Who is telling the truth? I mean, yeah, I told him to go fuck himself. And Daniel's sickbed confession. Fuck you. Now the insurance company is refusing to pay. at the consulate in Vietnam. See you. I do feel sad because it's about 1,500 US dollars. Hotel staff member Dong has had to give up the Aussie passport she was holding as collateral, leaving her with the hideous prospect of having to pay for Rodney's hotel bill herself. The split between maybe three staff at the hotel is 500 bucks, which is probably about a month's wage for her. What a shocker. It seems there's no end to Rodney's she'll be right mate attitude. What can you do, Saigon long necks first. Bills later. I don't think he realizes the staff are gonna have to pay the hotel bills. Steph discusses the case yeah, with well, boss Richard. Give him some encouragement to do that. The hotel bill isn't Rodney's only problem. Also his visa's expired. So he's here illegally. 
First things first. Well, when I discover that Rodney's visa has expired, I know straight away that he's now becoming our consular client because he's breaking the law and we're going to have to deal with the authorities to help him leave the country. Fast action now will save a lot of heartache later. No one wants to see the larrikin beer lover banged up in jail. Hello. Hi, Rodney. It's Stephanie calling from the Australian Consulate General. How are you? Well, I'm not real good. I'm so tough. All my clothes are gone, everything. Where are you staying now? At the hotel well, I'm still? I'm staying nowhere. Well, when I speak to Rodney for the first time on the telephone, his voice sounds unusual. In our trade, you know, it always relates to a substance of some sort, whether it's drugs or alcohol. And so you straight away think about, OK, the, the, there's another layer on this consular client they're going to have to deal with. Are you going to help him? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're going to help you. Um... And when you're speaking to somebody at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and they sound so drunk, you know from experience that this is going to be a problem. That is the ugly old man next to you. Uh, yeah. He's actually quite handsome. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to the consulate before? Vincom Centre. Yeah, yeah. Vincom Centre on the 20th floor. By, by three, is that cool? By three, yeah, that's okay. All right, we'll see you soon now. Okay, Bye. thanks, Rodney. Beauty. <laughs> Oh, this is more my style. This is good. But instead of making his way to the consulate, Rodney decides to spend what little Vietnamese dong he's got left on a few more Saigon long necks. It's been a stressful time. So now you just a couple of It's all good. Back at the consulate, it's not all good. 501. Oh my gosh, and what about our Rodney? He's not here. Richard and Steph have been waiting all afternoon and it's nearly closing time. Something tells me this is going to be a to-be-continued. Yep. Ah. Bumengrad Hospital, Bangkok. Absolute nightmare. Just not knowing what to do. I was fearing for my life. I thought I'd never walk again. 24-year-old Daniel is suffering from serious head injuries after being bashed outside of a ping-pong bar. Everything just got really out of order real quickly. Like, the moment he said something and I said something, calling us cons, wankers, fuck you, blah, blah. His medical bills are mounting and his insurance company is still refusing to pay up. I mean, yeah, I told him to go fuck himself. I mean, probably 10 years ago was the last time he got laid. I mean, still. Nicole desperately wants to get her son home. But Daniel can't fly until the doctors give him the all clear. They will only give him that certificate if they believe that there is no danger. In worst case scenario, Daniel could have a blood clot. He could die on that plane. So they need to be really sure that he is well enough that there is no residual damage that will prevent him from flying. We've just found out that Daniel's MRI has come back and he does not have a fractured neck and he had a CT, brain CT, and he is going to be fine. We are thrilled. Mum Nicole's <laughs> over the moon. According to the doctors, Daniel's fit to fly. But the patient is not so sure. Just worried about going on the plane tomorrow. Just, just earaches. My ears have been ringing for the past week. Um, I had a bit of a bleed in my head. Got a fracture. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. In Vietnam, after spending last night sleeping on a park bench, Rodney, the visa overstayer, is back in the lobby of his hotel enjoying a hangover breakfast of fried rice. But the manager wants him out, so they've rung the consulate. I guess we just have to be a little bit brutal with him and let him know what his situation is, that he's passed his visa. Yep. He's spent all his money, he's got nowhere to stay and he really needs to start thinking about what his next move is. Richard knows this could spiral out of control, so he's taking charge. What's your situation now? You got nothing or? Yeah, I'm stuck. Uh-huh. You have anything on you? Credit cards, wallet? Gone. Everything's gone. Well, what about some mates back in Australia? Can't they buy you some money up and you say, I'll pay you back when I get home? Well, that's, that's, not, that's not the issue. I've got money in Western Union already, my friends have sent me. Turns out Rodney does have money. He just well, doesn't know how to use internet banking to access it. Doesn't matter. 
And after being robbed twice and having his passport confiscated by the hotel, he doesn't trust anyone. So at the moment you've got no cash, you've got nowhere to stay. Okay, so if we go to Western Union, we can get the cash for you. So the first thing you can do is get into a hotel, have somewhere to stay. I kind of like staying in the park. Yeah, but it's not, reason it's not sensible. You know, you've got to think about your own safety here. All right, so are you happy to do that? That's right. To get access to cash, Rodney will need his passport back. Here we are, here's your passport. With valid ID back in hand, next stop is the bank where Rodney claims the money sent by a friend is waiting for him and he's already made plans on how to spend it. Well, I'm going to go and have probably three or four long necks and then I'm going to make some phone calls. <coughs> and ring the bra boys. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm the Rupert boy. Send me some cash. <laughs> <laughs> At the bank, there's good news and bad. The money's arrived, but Rodney still can't access it. Rodney's mate in Sydney has spelt Rodney's last name wrong. So Western Union here won't release the money. Um, Rodney's mate has to go back and rectify the spelling, but he's got his phone turned off. So now we've got to try and work out what to do next. What to do next is not a problem for Rodney. Hey, we're just in this situation where we, we've got to get in touch with, with your mate in Australia to get your name fixed up. Let's have a beer first. No, 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 no. Well, I'm having one. Have one when we're finished. And it's hot too. Diplomatic relations have hit a roadblock. Coming up, the ex-digger's wife caught on hidden camera. And Daniel's airport drama. Oh, my God, he started vomiting again pushes his family to breaking point. In Bangkok, Daniel is out of hospital and ready to fly home. After days of haggling, the insurance company has finally agreed to pay his claim in full. Right, let's go home. Daniel has got his fit to fly certificate. However, if the airline says, nah, you're not going, then that's their call and he won't be on that plane tonight. Daniel's lost 10 kilos in one week and can barely walk. So I'm just getting dizzy. Nicole wants to get her son home where she can care for him properly. But will the flight put Daniel at risk? I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm oh my God, he started vomiting again. Flight 475 to Sydney is boarding. As the final call approaches, airline officials must make a snap decision on whether he can fly. At the worst possible moment, Daniel starts throwing up again. Oh no, I'm so sorry. And the doctor has failed to sign the fit to fly certificate. <laughs> At the consulate in Vietnam. So what we're going to do is lend you $43.65. Okay, so it's called a traveller emergency loan. The money you have to pay back. We noted on the system that you have a small debt to the Commonwealth. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you get it spelling right. <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> Richard decides the best way to help Rodney help himself is to pay the hotel direct. I don't want to give you the cash. I want to pay for your room, so I know you've got a place to stay for the for your nights. Then can I have a beer? Hey. Then can I have a beer? Yeah. <laughs> Rodney's cheeky. You know he's got a funny personality. He sees the joke in life. Jeez, I hope you guys get a good salary. I've got to tell you. As much as he's, you know, a, a pain in parts, he's actually a really nice guy. He's, um, and the more you talk to him, the more you sort of really like him. OK, done and dusted. Rodney okay. promises to return to the embassy we'll tomorrow to tomorrow. repay his debts we'll and to sort out yeah. his visa yeah. overstay okay. issue. Yeah, good night. Take care. Bye. But instead of checking himself into the hotel to avoid being picked up by the immigration police, We're gonna have a couple of beers. Rodney decides it's beer o'clock. 
this crisis is far from over. <laughs> in Bangkok, there's finally a breakthrough in the search for Ben's missing wife. The phone trace has paid off. The number's been traced to Ben's wife's ex-lover and they have an address. They're heading to Old Bangkok, a tough neighbourhood on the outskirts of town. There are parts of Bangkok that can be really dangerous. So places where people are taking drugs, prostitution is rife, and that's the kind of area where this ex-boyfriend lives. Along the way, Ben gets word Orr's trying to make contact. Or, or talk to her mum. She, she said she wants to talk but cannot because he there and she's scared, yeah? She wants to come to my house but can't because she doesn't know where she is. Too dangerous to go in alone, a police patrol is called to escort them. It's a race against the clock. If Orr is being held against her will, every second counts. Hello? Hello? Orr? Suddenly, Ben receives another call. It's from Orr's ex, the alleged kidnapper. Talk to him. Who's this? This is that fucking A. He tells Ben he's let Orr go. Quickly, the battery's going to go flat. This is the actual CCTV footage from the hotel Ben works at, just moments before the call came in. That's Orr, walking in, looking confused and wearing no shoes. When she's told Ben's not there, she leaves. Coming up. Rodney, I'll take one to go with me. You can't drink in a Commonwealth car. Rodney's desperate bid. First, we've got to get some beer. To keep on boozing in Vietnam. We are literally like no, minutes no, from the airport. I'm going to jump out, man. Can I talk to her, please? Ben's search for his wife is finally over. They've found Orr, waiting outside her husband's hotel room. Close the door and lock it. That's all Ben ever wanted, to have his wife back. Confused and upset, she's reunited with her relieved family. Ben thanks the local police for helping to locate his wife. Thank you very much. I wish you happy. I wish you strength. God bless you from now and God forever. Bless you. You've done so much for us. After a four-day ordeal, Ben's wife is finally safe. But the question remains, what really happened to all? A new day in Vietnam. All right, let's get this on the road. And Richard finally has a plan to rid the country of Rodney, the boozed up big wave surfer. Hello. They've booked him on a flight to Australia that leaves in two hours. Did you call him? Is he there? He should be at the hotel, but now he's still at the shop drinking. The worst case scenario for us today is if we get to Rodney and he just says he doesn't want to go. Rodney can't be forced to leave the country if he doesn't want to. One more beer, it's no big deal. You know, we're, we're oh. bending over backwards, oh. Rodney. Oh. I'll take one to go with me. You can't drink in a Commonwealth car. And oh, we've got to pay some bills. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Success Come at on last. You. But there is still the $1,500 he owes in minibar and room charges at his first hotel. At the moment, the reception staff are owing the money to the manager, so this is actually going to just clear them from actually having to cover Rodney's cost. True to his word, Rodney always had the money. He just didn't know how to access it. All right, so just want to have a quick count. It's all there, straight from Rodney's bank account. Joy for yep. Dung, who was the one who sounded okay, the alarm in the much. first place. Thank you for your help. Yeah, that's OK. Come on. Yeah. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. His debt's cleared. They head for the airport. But Rodney continues to push his luck. But right, first, we've got to get some beer. 
But otherwise, I jump in the taxi and you can follow me. Richard needs to keep him calm. How hard can it be to pull the car over? We are literally like no, minutes no, from the airport. I'm going to jump out, man. And then we can do cocktail hour. I've never had a cocktail in my life. <laughs> we'll start with some Shirley Temples. <laughs> For Rodney, the game is up. Now that's just weird. <laughs> and the two protagonists even get a bit emotional. I'm going to be sad, huh? You know? I think I'm going to be sad too. You talk to me differently, Rich. Uh, you talk to me differently. All that's left is to see him onto the plane. Transit in KL. KL? Yeah. It's very quick. Very expensive beer. Heaven help the flight attendants. <laughs> Daniel also made it onto the plane and is now back home in Sydney. You're going in the water. <laughs> he's lost his sense of taste and smell, but he's recovering and in good spirits. As for Ben and Orr, they came into the embassy and confirmed she'd been kidnapped by her ex-boyfriend. She got away because he was freaked out that the police were coming for him, and he'd gone out and forgot to lock with the padlock on the door. If you want her to press charges, you need to push the police and say, you know, you know she's held against her will. What are you doing about her? If she's got a forensic examination. The best way to get anywhere is just don't leave them alone. Mm. Next week on The Embassy. I've never met anyone like him. Elle's shattered dreams. Yeah, I did. <laughs> the love of her life fell from this balcony onto that patch of grass. We bought a Batman and Robin water gun. Elario, the superhero. He needs a passport. It's not upside down. Oh. <laughs> but wants much more. I was wondering um, if, um, by any chance, you were free to have lunch with me now. Oh. And Mickey's on top of the world one moment. He's sitting in the middle of Bangkok, on top of a jumbo jet. Out of control, the next. 